The big post-holiday sales rush began today as retailers served up deep discounts and easy gift exchanges to lure shoppers back to the mall. But in the state of Colorado, school-aged children have been prepped somewhat differently for the shopping season. Schools there are trying to teach children about the realities of spending and financial discipline. NewsHour correspondent Tom Bearden explains. A carefree winter day on a preschool playground in a Denver suburb. Three to five-year-old children who are many years away from the realities of adult life. Go! Or are they? I am going to buy a dog. You're going to buy a dog. These kids are learning about money, drawing coins and dollar bills, simulating buying things from the classroom store, acting as cashiers to make those sales. In 2009, the Colorado legislature mandated a change in state educational standards requiring that personal financial literacy be part of public education from preschool through high school. The state schools had to begin teaching to that mandate this fall. Ruth Hartvigson is an early childhood coach for the Jefferson County school system. She says they were skeptical of the whole idea at first. We didn't want to make these kiddos materialistic. And it was a shift in thinking for us as an educational staff to think that's not what this is all about. We're just helping them to know another fact of life. All right, Haley, let's clean up our books. Amanda so Jerome is a preschool instructor. Well, I think it's important to teach responsibility. I think it's important to teach them to appreciate things, that we all work hard in life, and when you do, you, when you work hard, you're rewarded with it, and that's how you get the things that you want. People sell houses to earn money. Sitting in on the class this day, Christina Climaco. She's not an educator. She's an executive at Great West Insurance, one of the country's larger financial service companies. When the legislature passed the mandate, it didn't provide any additional money for it. In fact, Colorado has been forced to make massive cuts in the education budget. Great West decided to step in and help. Climaco runs the company's financial literacy program, which last fall awarded 25 $5,000 grants to individual teachers all over the state. We're already seeing that these grants are having a huge and tremendous impact on student knowledge and just really empowering teachers to teach personal finance in the classroom. Climaco says the grant applications proposed many different approaches. They set up the classroom. There were bakeries and coffee shops and hair salons and you have to go to those you know, different shops and give them fake money and they're starting to learn, I actually have to give something to get something back in return. So while it does seem like it might be too much, those are really the basics that kids in preschool need to start learning about. So make sure you have a notebook and your pencil ready to go. Make sure that your banking statement's up to date. With Kristen Bernstein takes okay. it a step further for her fourth graders yeah, at El Dorado right? Elementary School in Douglas County. Here you go, Brett. She got one of the $5,000 grants and used part of the money to buy iPad tablet computers, which the children use for everything from simple calculations to internet financial research. She serves them a steady diet of fiscal responsibility. What do I want to buy? Why do I want to buy it? Why is really, really important. That's what's gotten people in lots of trouble with their money because they bought things they really didn't need and they really didn't know why they wanted it. They just bought it to have it. Her classroom has a store stocked by parents, and students use the simulated money they earn in class to buy things. The purchases are deducted from their classroom bank accounts. Remember, that's 150. Okay, I want a gum. Okay, you want a gum. Gum's popular today. A student economist evaluates supply and demand and adjusts the store's prices accordingly. They'll also tell me what we're running low on because of supply and demand. So my kids have also had lessons on supply and demand and raising and lowering of prices, and they've actually got to watch that happen in stores with the Christmas and holiday season around. So, Brett, if you buy a gum, you'll be the last person to get it for 150. The next person will have 160. Bernstein says the children have mastered some surprisingly sophisticated concepts. I learned about banking and um, how you save your money to do things, and I learned what interest is. Some kids see their parents going through tough times at home and naturally come to school with questions about what's going on with um, negative money situations. 60 miles north, sixth graders at Walt Clark Middle School punch a time clock before class begins. Teachers Linda Pfeiffer and Chad Custer say that's designed to reinforce the idea that going to school is an actual job. Students also have simulated outside jobs. 
They learn how to total up their income, deduct taxes and monthly expenses, and figure out what they can afford to do with what's left over. You need to decide, can you afford to go to the movies tonight, this Friday night? Can you get popcorn if you can afford to go to the movies? And some students find out the consequences of not being prepared to work. We're going to unemploy you. We're going to let you go from this position again. So you are now fired from this job. So good luck to you. This boy, uh, great kid, but came to class unprepared and not ready to work. And he has this behavior quite often. Uh, when that type of ha behavior happens, uh, we, we let them go from their job, knowing that if you don't come to work and ready to work, chances are you're not going to keep that job. Pfeiffer also handed out what she called good, bad, and ugly cards, real-life curveballs like unexpected car repairs. Oh, no. Did you get a big bill today? Yeah, it was 400 bucks for um, my car needs a new brake cylinder thing. Ouch. Yeah. Is that going to be hard to pay? Yeah, kind of. We've seen kids really starting to have those aha moments of, wait a minute, um, you know, doing a minimum wage job is not going to get me to where I want to be in life. And, and they're starting to understand that their parents are, are struggling. They, it's tough to make ends meet even having had an education. So they're, they're seeing that the education is huge. The teachers we spoke to all said the children's parents were on board with teaching their kids about money, that most were quite enthusiastic. They plan to pass on the lessons they learned this year to fellow teachers, leveraging the grant money to further develop financial literacy education throughout all of the state's public schools.